The recruiting landscape in the state of Texas, totally different. It has altered completely over the past 5, 10, 15 years to where there are a lot of perceptions that I think have long been held about residing in the Lone Star State as a program that may not hold true right now. There was a big to-do over the past week about Oregon going into the state of Texas and getting Kelvin Banks. That's a five-star offensive tackle, not from humble Texas, but just from humble Texas. I got corrected. If I got corrected once, I got corrected 550 times on the pronunciation. And the bad part is, I know people from Humble, Texas. I know an elected official in Humble, Texas. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about college football and the recruiting scene. Boy, it's changed in Texas. So there was this long-held assumption. Many of you probably still feel this way. And that is, if you're a program, a major program in Texas, you've got this massive advantage. Why? Well, number one, money. If you're Texas or Texas A&M, yeah, you got a lot of money to play with. But the real rubber meets the road advantage that you have if you reside in the Lone Star State is all this recruiting talent. And that's true. And the follow-up to that assumption that's never stated but just implied is you've got the default advantage because all those kids want to stay in state. Do they? At one point in time, they did. This is the rub. This is where the landscape has changed. So that perception, for example, with Steve Sarkeesian being hired at Texas is well, he's going to go there. He's going to run a high-octane offense. Oh, and by the way, he's going to have a lot of athletes. Why? Because they're going to virtually have their, they're going to have their pick of all these elite athletes across the state of Texas. And they don't have to lock down the state. It's Texas. they got dozens and dozens and dozens of kids every year. So they only need to sign 25 a year. Like, they'll be fine, right? Maybe. But it used to be a reality. It's not so much a reality anymore. And there were several things that happened. Mike Roach over on Horns 24-7 did a great job of kind of breaking this down layer by layer the other day. And I talked to some other scouting types at both the high school and college level in the state of Texas, and they totally echoed the sentiment of what's changed in the state of Texas. And if you don't pay attention to this, it may kind of come as a shock to you. But people on the ground in Texas, they're going to all nod their head because they know that this is real. It's true. It's been happening, and it's not just an overnight thing. I want to take you back because it started to happen even when Tom Herman was at Texas. Mike Roach pointed all this out. You know, Tom Herman landed the number three class back in, I think it was, it was 2018. Herman is at Texas. He lands the number three class. Okay, so that sets up that default talking point uh, until the end of his tenure. Well, he's got all this talent. Why isn't he winning? Well, that was a separate discussion. He did have a lot of talent that he brought in, but that's where the big change started to happen. Herman signs the number three class, but even then, the wheels were in motion. Here's what was happening. Number one, Oklahoma was at the tail end of the Stoops era. You had the very beginning of the Lincoln-Riley era, but that recruiting cycle, it was a transition for Oklahoma. So they didn't have their feet under him yet. Texas took advantage. Number two, Texas A&M was at the very tail end of the Kevin Sumlin era. Insert Jimbo Fisher. They don't have their legs under him from a recruiting standpoint. Texas takes advantage. Number three, yeah, Bama was already in the state, and Ohio State was already in Texas too, but you didn't have Clemson out there. You didn't have Oregon to deal with. You didn't have all these other contenders coming in the state, whereas if you just fast forward three more years, it's a shark fest out there. It's crazy, and what's happening is now you've had some transition at Texas a couple of times to where kids that are 17 or 18 years old right now they're not bleeding burn orange from birth quite like they were because they've had a couple of cycles now. You know, think about their life. Their life is only 17 years old. Their cognizant life is only like 11 or 12 years old. Well, what has Texas football been for them? You know, they probably are learning to walk and talk about the time Texas is losing to Bama in that national championship game. And the rest of it, it's very, very up and down, a little more down than up. They remember the Charlie Strong era. They remember the Tom Herman era. And now you've got Steve Sarkeesian in there. And my point is the impression they have of Texas a little bit different. Maybe even the impression they have of Texas a and a little bit different. But now every national contender views Texas the same way they've been viewing Florida. We've talked about this ad nauseum with Florida. Like the, the big three in Florida have long since come to the realization that Alabama's going to live down here, Clemson, Ohio State, all the big boys are going to live down here, and we're just going to have to beat them. They're not going away. No one thought that about Texas until recently, but now they think it about Texas. Like a while ago, Saban made Texas a priority. Uh, obviously, Urban Meyer and now Ryan Day, they've made Texas a priority, but Mario Cristobal, 
Dabo Swinney, they're all making Texas a priority because they're viewing it the same way they view Florida. Florida has not had its act together from a big three perspective so long that it made the in-state crop of talent vulnerable. And now you look a little bit out west and the same dynamic is in play at Texas. The major programs have not taken care of business for a long enough period of time collectively to where all of a sudden the big boys look out there and say, is that a big fat neon sign that reads open for business in Texas? Let's go out there. It's open for recruiting business. Let's go out there. And they have. And they're having great results now. They could live with Bama and Ohio State coming into Texas and taking the occasional Tony Brown or, you know, taking the occasional five-star talent. They can't live with Oregon do that. And Oregon just did it. And uh, a little word to the wise, I don't think Oregon's done in the state of Texas this cycle. So you can ellipsis that and will to be continued on that. But there is no rapport like there used to be, is what I'm saying. And this is where a lot of the scouts in and around, especially in East Texas, what they say when you talk to them is they'll say, there used to be some things in the way. Most notably, Texas is a big state. And so it's just much easier, as it is anywhere, to stay closer to home. Well, here's what NIL is doing. In Texas and elsewhere, but especially Texas, if you live in Houston, if you live in Dallas, if you live in Waco, if you live in Tyler, to get a little bit smaller geographically, it used to be that it was a nightmare. If you're going to go play at Oregon, do you know what travel expenses are for parents and, and cousins and aunts and uncles to go see you play in Oregon? Well, what they used to be versus what it's going to look like with NIL on the table, a little bit different. So you've removed yet another major hurdle, and all of a sudden, those boundaries, those fences that used to be around the state of Texas from a recruiting standpoint, they're just not there anymore. And what has to happen? Well, what has to happen is, first off, you got to accept the reality check. For instance, with Kelvin Banks, Texas, their staff was confident in landing him. And this is a five-star offensive tackle, if you're unfamiliar, that committed to Oregon just in the last week. And they were confident in Austin. Well, they didn't land him. And not only did they not land him, they didn't finish top two, apparently, for him. So one recruit does not make or break a class. But my point is, they're, I think Sark and his staff are realizing it's going to take us a little bit longer. The treadmill is going a little bit faster than we thought it was going when we hopped on it. So, you know, we skinned our chin there, but that's okay. Well, we have the ability to do it here. It's just not going to blow up overnight like we hoped it would. Well, that's okay. I mean, day by day, brick by brick, they can build a winning product and a winning culture there. Uh, they're still in it for a lot of big names. This is not a rain on the parade of Texas recruiting show by any stretch. I think the class will be fine. A&M, same way. Class will be fine. In a lot of ways, A&M's recruiting has improved marginally year over year or incrementally. The point is it's a new ball game in Texas. And so whereas once you used to look out there and think in the Mac Brown days, all right, let's wait for them to pick the players they want, and then we'll see if there's anyone left over we want to go try to get out of Fort Worth or out of, out of Brownsville. That's not the way it is anymore. The game of recruiting has changed in Texas.